My average price point is 1.5 and we have listings coming soon and coming in the next year up to five, seven million. And so people see that and they just think about the dollar sign, but they don't understand what it really takes behind that. If you're struggling in real estate right now, maybe it's because you're not focusing on the right clients and types of homes. Let me explain. You've likely heard the riches are in the niches and all too many agents understand that, but they don't apply it to their business. Today, this video is gonna completely change your approach to real estate forever. I brought on Taryn King, who went from being a struggling agent who was focusing on just selling every other average residential home to then making a switch to focusing on her niche of horse properties and she started listing multi-million dollar properties and has absolutely skyrocketed the real estate business and built a wildly successful team. Now, the important thing to know as you listen to this video is that this applies to any niche. So when you hear Taryn talking about horse properties, just look at your passion, your hobby, or your niche, and then apply it and interchange it with horses. And this entire interview will be applicable to you. Now, Taryn breaks down so many ninja strategies that I've genuinely genuinely never seen anybody else talking about from how she got started by building this insanely valuable website that you can do as she explains how to do it in this video at the end. All of the things that she did in order to create strategic partnerships to become the go-to person in her market for multi-million dollar horse properties and everything that she's been able to do in order to take her brand from being known as a normal residential agent to be known as the go-to person for these types of properties. So if you feel like you're just not making it in traditional residential real estate, this video is gonna be an eye opener because it's probably due to the fact that you're not tapping into the niche that would not only be wildly profitable and help you close more deals, but simultaneously, you're gonna have a ton more fun doing it. Now, before we get started, two quick things. Number one, I will link all of Taryn's incredible content below. She actually does have a new YouTube channel where she's gonna be walking through a lot of what she does. And I'll link your calendar link below if you would like to talk to her one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom about getting your niche dialed in and starting to become the dominant agent in your market as well. So without further ado, let's dive in and show you the blueprint of how to tap into your niche and absolutely skyrocket your production. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another special video where today we've gone on a pretty incredible guest talking about something that I think a lot of people are gonna find insane value in that nobody really dives into. So we've got on Taryn King, who's gonna be talking about niching down. And Taryn, you've got an absolutely incredible story of where you came from, where you are today. So I'm super excited to unpack that. Um, just welcome to the channel. Thanks, thanks. Super happy to be here. Excited. Definitely. It's going to be fun. You know, you've taken it in a direction that I think everybody has heard the quote, the riches are in the niches, but nobody really dives into that to the fullest extent. And, you know, you gave yourself permission to, which I think is super cool. So, you know, to kind of set some context and, and build a foundation here, why don't you give people a bit of an introduction as to who you are, where you're from, and what kind of got you to this point? Because it's a pretty wild ride. For sure. Um, you know, to start at the beginning, horse was quite honestly my first word. Um, it's been, you know, it's one of those things, if it's in your blood, it is in your blood. And it certainly is. I went to college for equine business management. I ran farms and breeding farms up and down the East Coast. And, you know, the, the truth of the industry is it's a really hard industry and it can be. And it's also really hard on your body. Um, and I decided that I didn't really want to go down that road a route of, you know, killing myself to make a couple bucks in the, you know, shoveling stalls and training. And I wanted to be able to help the industry in a really specific way. And I kind of fell into real estate when I left that industry and didn't know where I was going. I think that's kind of a typical story. I was mid 20s. I'll get, I'll get my real estate license. <laughs> Um, and, and struggled, to be quite honest, for a while with the, the typical residential stuff. You know, of course, it's oversaturated and, and it's just it's a lot. It takes a lot. You know, you have to have the passion for it. And I moved back out here to Colorado and never really anticipated selling horse properties. But in, I think organically it did just come together. And there's so many of them out here. Right. And so I kind of started getting into that with some of the smaller properties organically through my niche. You know, I'd started a horse rescue out here. I was really connected in the industry. And after probably probably about five or six years in residential, I said, you know what, I'm going to go for it. These are my people. These are the properties I love. And I know them really well. You know, I was 
seven years old and designing horse barns like that was my thing um so it just made sense and once I like you said once I gave myself permission to do so it just took off it really did and at this point we have a small team and we've got big plans and a lot of projects in the works to really how can we help this industry from all angles you know we are there's a development conversation there's the inflation conversation and it, it does affect these properties at a significant level so we've got We've got a lot of things going and it's just because I love it. You know, I, I just love what I do and I, I feel really lucky to be able to do this. I think that's so cool because, you know, even just wrapping up with that, like, you know, you, you have to love what you do. And so many people are just trying to do it the same way that everybody else is and they absolutely hate it. But it's, you know, there's multiple <laughs> one ways to, or multiple ways to approach this business. Like even for me, you know, I didn't want to do the same old thing either. So I really kind of leveraged my own niche and, and, you find so much more passion and excitement in your business when you actually do something that you love. But, you know, I think it would be really cool for you to maybe touch on some of the price points too, because you've got, you know, this, this wealth of opportunity, but you're niching down and getting some pretty incredible luxury listings from it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the hard conversation too, because the flip side of that is a lot of agents want to get into horse properties simply because they see the number, right? They go, oh, they're multi-million dollar properties. And certainly out here in Colorado on the front range, you know, we have my average price point is 1.5 and we have listings coming soon and coming in the next year up to five, seven million. And so people see that and they just think about the dollar sign, but they don't understand what it really takes behind that and the knowledge of everything from water rights, zoning, commercial versus residential and being able to partner with the right vendors. Um, and, and when we sell a horse property, you know, we are really full service. So we even will go and, and kind of transition from just being with realtors to being consultants, even after the fact. And, you know, I have lawyers and contracts and boarding agreements that we really help our people if they want to get into a tradition or a commercial training type facility, we're going to help them from, you know, close beyond to get that up and running. And that has certainly been a massive value add for sure. Yeah, that's that's wild. I see that all the time too, especially for me in the car community. Everybody sees people with these cars and they want to just touch on, you know, tap into that audience. But as you're alluding to, like if you're working with somebody that's in that kind of horse ecosystem, like you guys speak the same language. And, and you know, a hundred percent. Like you have the same lingo and the slang, and and you know, you guys can relate to each other. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they they try and touch on niches that are solely based on price point, but not based on interest. And when you're doing that, you can't connect or relate to these people on any way other than transactional versus transformational or relationship based. So, you know, I think one of the things I'd really like to unpack is that transition, because there will be people that say, okay, you know, I love golf, I want to do golf properties or waterfront or whatever. But there's kind of two things that you touched on there that I think are so, so important, which is your brand and what the evolution of that was, which we could start with. Yeah. But then also, you know, you being an expert in this, I think a lot of people just look at trans uh, transaction does it's a deal, it's a deal, it doesn't matter, it's just a deal. But understanding how things apply to it, like water rights and all these things, and actually becoming an industry expert in that field. So first, maybe let's unpack how that transition was with your brand. A lot of people are kind of fearful of like, okay, I found my niche. But what if I go all in or what if like, what if this happens? What if that happens? And you just committed. Yeah. Uh, and it was actually kind of, um, again, I, it was an organic thing that happened. You know, I, so with horse people, when we look at listings, every horse person is either going to skip through the house photos or know to go backwards through the photos so that they can find the barn photos, because that's what we want to see. You know, I hear it all the time from our clients. I don't care what the house looks like. I care what the barn looks like. I'm the same way, you know, we will live in an RV in a living quarters trailer if the barn is worth it. And so when I started Horse and Hearth, it was 2017, 2018. And I just said, you know, I want to, it was a blog, really. It was a website to be able to showcase those barns, take these listings and regurgitate them to people that the way that they want to see them and just focus in on the barns and make that the highlight of the listing. And so from that kind of hobby blog it really grew into something that at this point we have the blog is now a whole vendor database and we have 2500 vetted equine property specialist vendors whether it's fencing barn builders hay suppliers so our website isn't even really so much real estate oriented 
it is more so how do we provide as much value to those people and what how do we make it easy for them because Google searching for a trainer is just going to give you a bunch of crap that nobody has really looked at or vetted or are they even in business still. And it's a very tight knit community. It's a really small community when you get into it and everybody knows each other and you want to be able to have somebody that you trust, especially if you're moving to a new area and you aren't plugged into that community yet. So we give people on the front end, here's your kind of our VIP list of people that you should start with talking to. And that was, you know, that's where it started. And at this point now, it's grown to a uh, monthly networking um, happy hour that we do. We bring our uh, converted horse trailer mobile bar to that. So again, it's like all right in line. Um, we do seminars, we do webinars, we'll speak at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo, the stock show out here. And the other thing is we'll sponsor a lot. So we sponsor a lot of younger riders or um, partnering. We last year we partnered with the US Team Penning Association. And so getting in with those organizations as well is really key and just, I mean, I think I probably am living the definition of just go all in. And I really went all in, you know, I have on my old farm, I had up to a hundred horses on our, on the rescue. We were partnering with other rescues. So I'm like living this in my everyday, right? I have three horses, 10 minutes from me, and I manage that six horse facility for a friend. So I'm I'm out there selling these properties, but I'm also living these properties. You know, I come home and I still have to go feed my horses the same way they do. So the other thing is we don't often do a lot of, you know, evening showings because we all have to go feed our horses. And I get it, right? I get it. I understand that industry. Um, and then the other stuff, we have some big things in the works, you know, it's it's really difficult to search for horse properties. There is not a great way um, to do so. You know, people are going on Zillow or Realtor.com and trying to basically you search by acreage and hope that a barn pops up. And like that is mind blowing to me that that is how we are still searching for these properties. So again, find a solution and create the problem or find the problem, and create the solution. Um, we're working on creating essentially the Zillow of horse properties to make it easy for people to search for what they really want, because there's also you get into these niche and not only is it horse properties, but you know, eventers, jumpers, they're going to have different needs than a dressage rider in terms of the depth of the footing, the type of footing. A roper is going to have different needs in terms of the size and structure of their arena. So there's there's just so much that goes into it. And it's funny because you can you can tell so quickly when an agent is just trying to, you know, get into it or make a buck off of it and they see an opportunity and the terminology, like you said before, right, you know, bathing stall or bath stall, it's a wash rack. And if you yeah. don't know that, you're immediately discrediting yourself and you don't even have any idea. So another thing that we do, again, just giving it all away for free. I'm really big on that. And I help other agents all the time. I'm always out there. We we market a lot of other agents listings as well. We have over 2000 horse property buyers on our email list and the front range alone. And so they we allow them to plug in for free. And so many of these agents are mind blown that we don't even charge to help market their stuff, right? Because I just want to get these properties in the hands of the right people. And I we actually just put out a, a big cover story for the Colorado Horse Source and the future of our farms. And especially right now with as much development as we're seeing, these old farms, they're being bought up by developers left and right, and we are losing properties. And so that is like, that hurts my soul, you know? Yeah. And so have that ability to go in and say, listen, I understand you've spent your life building this ranch and you don't want to just hand that off to anybody who doesn't care about it. And so we care and we're going to do everything we can to make sure this property stays in the hands of horse people and it doesn't just get bought up and developed. I mean, we are we are seeing boarding barns closing out here at an alarming rate. And it's really, it's an interesting time to be doing this as well. And kind of, I, you know, fighting the good fight over here in my little corner to keep yeah. these properties. But, you know, and, and when we talk about niching down, we've niched down to horse properties. We've kind of got that thing rolling. We've got the team set up now. And what I'm personally diving into is even niching down further than just horse properties is a generic term, but we've got a lot of aging farm owners out here. And we have a lot of people that they, they spent their life, you know, building these properties and building their legacy. And at a certain point it becomes too much, you know, you've got 40, 60, 80 acres and you're a single person in your seventies, like, 
that's a lot. And you end up feeling buried under these properties, you know, weeds and trees and landscaping become overwhelming, but never mind just the horse aspect or the inevitable farm junk that you collect over the years. And so um, just recently, we've actually started partnering with uh, some property cleanup and some of our vendors that we're going to, you know, everybody in this industry is discounting their commissions, right? They're discounting, discounting. It's a race to the bottom. We're actually increasing our commissions and we are offering a commission menu and going out to these aging farm owners who really feel overwhelmed by their properties and saying, hey, we can help. We can we can help here. We're going to come in full service. We're going to clean up your property. We're going to really get this thing looking good so that you can actually make what you want to out of it. And especially right now, with the market shifting, you know, we pull stats specifically on horse properties separate from the residential because it is its own market. And it's much more of a buyer's market these days, you know, very much so. And they are sitting, you know, that's the the honest conversation. And if you're not putting everything in there and you're not putting a nice product on the market, you're at risk of just wasting your time. And I'm not trying to waste my time. And I don't want to put my name on something that I'm not proud of either. It's a kind of, I've done a lot of farm flipping, farm renovations. So again, I have that passion for it. Um, and I realize we now have the track record and the portfolio of before and afters to really go out there and say, hey, you know, if you're willing to pay a slightly higher commission, we will truly come in here and do the work for you. And we've partnered with uh, vendors who will get paid at closing, who will are just as just as passionate about these properties. And so even finding that niche within a niche, that I think is going to be a game changer going into this next market for sure. That's super cool. I think there's some some really important concepts that will apply to everybody um, that I'd really love to unpack. And I think the first one is going to be a concept that I was talking about, which is that convenience sells. And I think the fact that, you know, you went through the effort in most people's mind, but the investment in your perspective of actually making it convenient for people to find what they're looking for. I think a lot of people are going to say, well, it's a nightmare to find horse properties and it just is what it is versus you're saying, well, there's a problem here. I'm going to provide as an entrepreneur, the solution to that. And I'm going to give them that centralized hub and that resource because the more convenient it is and the more value you bring, the more people want to reach out to you. So what I would love to unpack is also the passion behind it, where you actually did go all in, like you're not dabbling in this. <laughs> you like I tell people all the time, if you want a strong personal brand, you are your brand, you have to live it in every sense. Like even for me, like I was at the, you know, private unveiling of a new Lamborghini last night, and yeah. people were asking like, Mike, are you ever going to get a car that's not purple? And my response is no, like, wow, it yeah. is like, you know, this is what I live, right. And And I think, I would love for you to kind of dive into what that all in approach looked like of like how you got started, because I think, you know, even just looking here in Alberta, like there's so many people that are into like hiking and outdoors because of the Rocky Mountains. So it's not the end of the world for somebody to say, hey, I'm going to, you know, put together a website for properties that either have mountain views or close to the mountains or, you know, and then be able to start funneling value into that site like you did and blogging and, you know, just taking this all encompassing approach. So what was that journey like saying, okay, I'm launching this website and then it just evolved into this massively valuable resource. Yeah, it did. And it, it's also allowed us to not only on the consumer side, but providing a lot of value to our vendors. And so we're giving free marketing to vendors now too, right? Of having them on this database and having featured vendors. Uh, and the other thing that we're doing is we go out and we'll spotlight vendors, right? So we'll go and we have one Colorado Saddlery. We're going to go see them and get the inside tour of how they're building these saddles and what their factory looks like and what their story is. So again, like putting, how do I just make it easier for you guys, make it easier for clients, for consumers and for vendors and partners. And I, I, I was thinking um, when I first got into this and it's that luxury kind of, is it horse property? Is it luxury? So, so many times I drive a, a 7.3 F-350 crew cab long bed. Like this truck is massive. That's my daily driver. Um, and I'm restoring it and fixing it up. And again, that's my passion. I've wanted that truck since I was 16. I show up to these horse properties in my truck and my boots. 
and there's they immediately go okay she gets it and that was a I didn't really understand that I think when I first started too was just like being so authentically myself and just like I love that truck I'm not going to take my little Subaru everybody out here has a Subaru but yeah. that's that is me right and so um, a lot of people see these horse properties and go oh it's luxury because of the price point and that could not be further from the truth you know really I've had so many other agents um they'll show up on a horse property and they're like you know in heels and they're Mercedes and I'm like don't worry I got this I'll walk the 30 acres with your client you know yeah. <laughs> because it's just it's the reality of them and you've got to be willing to to get in and get dirty um and we had you know one of the properties we sold last year was these poor, and actually I so this is kind of like a, the mindset almost like manifesting with your business and when I first got licensed out here in 2017 I was pouring through the MLS and looking at expired listings and going okay I found this one and I said I'm going to sell that thing it had been expired I think 15 different times with 11 different agents since 2011. Uh, I didn't know these people. I didn't know how I was going to know these people, but I just remember going, okay, I'm going to sell that. And over the course of my career, I organically found connections and related to these people and was able to, at this point, I've sold that property. I've sold another piece of land for them. I've helped them with multiple rentals because we they kept trying to hire luxury agents and it just wasn't the right fit. They don't get it. They don't understand these properties, the lingo, never mind the connections and the network that we have. So a lot of our stuff, a lot of these properties do actually sell off market because, you know, when you're talking about a boarding business and a training business, you don't want to go and put a for sale sign out there. Then your clients run scared and they're going to go um, move somewhere else and you're sitting on the market for a year and you don't have any income like that's not that's very much not what you want to do and so they do sell off market and they call us because we do have a lot of connections and we know not only with clients and consumers but also with other horse property realtors so being able to network within your realtor organizations of who kind of is in this niche or whatever niche you're in and then also the vendors so we have hey you've got some fencing down let's get that fixed let me make a quick call we need some new footing over here no problem we need some new you know a, a lawyer who actually understands horse properties and how crazy horse people can be at times we, we need to have all angles covered and then it's a no-brainer you know our, we walk in I don't know the last time I had to sell myself for truly at a listing appointment because we walk in and we speak the lingo we're very organic we're very authentic we're we're chatting about horses most of the time you know not even horse properties and that is just the immediate connection there and the immediate trust too never mind that it is again it's a small industry and, and really I mean it's a massive industry it's a multi-billion dollar industry but when it comes down to it everybody knows each other and so then you've got people going, oh yeah just call Taryn just call Taryn and at this point we we do a lot of marketing because I want to help people not fall into that trap of getting in the luxury vein and then it just sits but we don't have to these days, you know, it really is organic. Um, it's definitely now I'm really focusing less on the marketing and more on building the brand, moving those projects forward and allowing my team to to take up the, the clients and take up the, you know, buying and selling side of it so that we can even continue to provide more value. And I think that's just the conversation is never stop thinking of how you can truly just what problems are out there for your people. What are they looking for and what how can you help? Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, bringing it back to kind of the, the the beginning here, you know, if somebody's saying that, okay, I know my niche, I'm going to start going after it, I'm going to be going all in. When you started that site as sort of a foundation, you know, were you writing the blogs? Were you starting to add vendors? Like, I would really love to give people like a tactical, okay, you know, I'm in a completely different niche, but I want to get started. This is what I did kind of approach. So what did that look like for you? So I am a little uh, crazy obsessive and I did build my website myself and I I also enjoy writing, you know, I've, I'm writing some articles for, you know, relevant publications. I think that's a really easy one to get into is if you do like writing or you do enjoy writing, start reaching out to some local uh, niche publications, right? And whether it's like Airbnb investing or mountain properties. I have a guy who focuses very much on land and so like exploring that avenue and start writing. I think that's a really good one. Start partnering with vendors, just build your vendor network. Um, I did build my, my website myself. 
I don't think that was the necessarily the most efficient way to do what I did and to get here, but I'm very much a perfectionist for better or worse. So, and speaking of that, that's, you know, that's the other reason of um, knowing, knowing these properties. I know what my people are looking for. I know what they want to see featured on those properties. And it's taken me a while to find the photographers even that will understand and listen to me. Like I say, hey, I know that barn isn't like what you think is pretty, but we want to see it. And so like, you know, we see a lot of listings that don't even show the inside of the barn because, oh, it's a dirt floor or plywood stalls, but that's what we want. And so I have to really train my partners as well to, you know, have that vision that I just naturally I'm like why well, yeah of course you would take a, a photo of that right and they just they had to be trained as well so I'm just like looking through the lens of your clients and what are they focusing in on I you know I'm actually I'm now buying a drone um, because I want to be able to do these property video tours from an equestrian's perspective and I continually ran into like well, they just don't quite get it they don't quite get it and so I want to be able to focus in on exactly like that's those fine details. They do matter. Um, I definitely think that, you know, if you're going to dive into this, partner with somebody to build you a website. That was probably uh, the first thing that I would change uh, and bring those people in around you. That was a big lesson for me and a big lesson in the last couple of years is really, truly be able to kind of swallow your pride and bring a team in around you and bring support in around you a little bit earlier than I did. I think that would have been beneficial for me. You know, I struggled really late nights or pulling all nighters because I have this massive passion and I wanted it to be this product that I envisioned, but I was like just draining myself, right? And I wasn't riding my horses and I was just spending all this time getting this product perfected where I could have partnered with people earlier. And I think that's really a valuable conversation is don't try and do it all yourself. You know, go out there and have somebody Fiverr, website build, partner with your vendors, provide value to them, and that's going to happen organically. And then it allows you to, to continue living that life of the passion, right? Don't give up that passion. Don't lose sight of that passion. I'm going to go ride my horses today. It's the first time in a few months, but you have to get out there and you've got to still do like, why, why are you here? Don't lose sight of that. That's that I think is a big thing in this industry. The burnout is, is real. And even with as passionate as I am about this industry, I've still experienced severe burnout because you just go so hard, so hard, so hard. And I love it so much. And I just, I just want to do it all. I just want to do it all. But you do have to really, you know, be realistic and honest. And it is a long term, you know, it's a long range plan. It is not going to happen overnight. And I think, you know, you've you've talked about this. And even this year when I struggled with, as the market changed, um, I remember a conversation that you had had like, well, if you, you know, if this was a three month plan versus if this was a 10 year plan, right? That mm -hmm. changes your whole perspective. And that's huge. And you have to have that long range vision. Absolutely. Yeah, big time. And I think one of the things that you've done so well, and, and I think a lot of people underestimate is a lot of people look at real estate as this one to one relationship of just agents to clients. And I think what you've done is understanding the truth embodiment of your network is your net worth and looking at the fact that at the end of the day, our job should rather be a master connector. And the more you can connect people with, you know, I, you know, it's the same in, in just traditional residential, the agents that I see are crushing it, know the they know the plumbers, they know the electricians, like, you know, even me buying a house, I text uh, the area manager, he knows the blinds people he knows, like everything. And that's why he's so valuable, because you're seen as a resource. And that's the easiest way to stay top of mind is like, even when it's not even relevant to real estate, in, in, in essence, it is because they're reaching out to you for that connection. You're the agent, you're always staying top of mind. And I think a lot of people are looking at this too singularly and not looking at the bigger picture of how can I just create this wealth of value through connections so that I'm always seen as the person. My mentor, Andy Frizzella talks about this, like be the yes man, be able to say yes to everything. You need something, yes. You want something, yes, I got the person. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. But you know, one of the things that I would also like to unpack here is the learning experience that you went through in terms of your knowledge about the niche, right? For me, when I was in luxury, again, like you're talking about, there's a whole different, you know, um, kind of ecosystem of knowledge that you have to develop of, of, you know, as you're learning to like water rights and things like that. 
what was that journey like? Like, where did you learn from? What did you do? How did you study? And, and for anybody that's going into their own niche, like where should they start to start learning more about these homes? And that was a really interesting experience I had because I did start uh, initially, I was licensed in Boston. You know, my family's from Massachusetts. And so when I kind of fell into real estate, I got my license out in Boston. And, you know, you can't find a horse without driving two hours outside of that <laughs> You know, it's a major metro area and so that was just not even on my radar and the other conversation there is you know in when i moved out here and water is a huge thing out here that's not a conversation i had ever had in massachusetts like what do you mean there's just water everywhere <laughs> there's yeah. hay everywhere there's green grass everywhere so that was definitely even just horse keeping out here is very different um even term in terms of what we feed them you know i never fed a lot of alfalfa out here, I feed a lot of alfalfa. It's just a different world. So I do actually, you know, 35 years in horses, it was still a learning experience for me, for sure. Um, and it was, again, it was, I ha I was living it. So I had to organically, you know, naturally figure out how people are keeping horses out here and what they're doing. But when it came to water rights, that was probably the most pertinent, you know, the, the biggest one, right? That is huge. Um, and that was something that I just started taking classes. You know, I was taking classes. I'm a huge learner. I'm always researching. So I would even find like a lot of lawyers put out blogs online. So I was just Googling stuff. I was just consuming as much as I possibly could because I knew I was out of my element, even in an industry that I knew so well. Uh, the other thing that recently, even just in the past year of using chat GPT to educate yourself, like that was a huge one. And, and also educating my agents because I might have a lot of inherent knowledge. I'm not necessarily the best at breaking it down and regurgitating it to these agents and to, and how to train them. Um, and so that really helped me break down water rights in a very digestible way. And you can use it the same way for your clients, right? You, you might understand water rights, you might understand zoning, but how do you put that forth to your clients in a really clear and concise way? And so again, don't try to do it all on your own. Use the tools that we have around us. Start, you know, organically getting that knowledge and then use the technology. We've, it's incredible, you know, and, and be able to, to be able to give it back to your clients in a really easy to digest format is wildly valuable. Yeah, I love that. And I think, you know, being a, a, an everlasting student of the game is so, so important because there's so much to learn and, and the more value and more knowledge that you have, the more valuable you become. And I think that's what allows you to just, you know, win so many listings because you could dance circles around people based on your knowledge. And that comes from just going down rabbit holes and getting excited to educate yourself. I even found that again in, in the traditional residential side where the agents that understood homes, understood how they were constructed, understood all of these different things. Like, you know, I'm sure you can echo this, but I know people that could go into a mechanical room and they couldn't even point at the AC unit. Like, <laughs> how can you advise people? You're like telling people to buy a home just because on the surface it looks good, but then they're gonna run into an issue you know, months down the road. So I think being that knowledge source, exactly. First. And when you go, uh, let me figure out what you're even talking about. <laughs> yeah. and it's going to put you at a disadvantage. You're not going to be the first person they call next time. And so again, even knowing those, like knowing those systems and knowing like we have sprinkler systems and uh, fly spray systems and automatic waters that always break on you. And so a lot of that is just you like, diving deep and living like living your lifestyle and, and partnering with those vendors who are going to help you because I don't know everything. There's I mean, there's just massive amounts of nuances in this industry. And I'm even very much I grew up in New England. It's much more of an English centered area, you know, English riding and out here it's much more Western focused. So that was again a difference that I had to start to learn that lingo and start to like network in that area. It was a different ball game as well, but it, it's important. It really is. And that never stop learning thing. I think that's huge. Don't get comfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> Big time. No, and I, and I love that. And you know, as we start to kind of pull this full circle, you know, I would love to just touch on the personal brand. So we've got the website, but a lot of people are always curious, like, you know, what does that transition look like? Like, are you starting to put out content just like, because I think one of the things people fear, and I actually fell victim to this in the beginning in my own mind is, well, if I just start talking about luxury, 
well, what if I don't get luxury clients? And what if normal people think I don't work with average price points? And like, you know, this this kind of dilemma that people have and what that looks like in terms of how you start to shift the message to your audience with the branding that you're creating physical, digital, social, this all encompassing kind of approach to branding. And that's a, it's a huge conversation because I do think about one, I've been told by previous brokers, uh, you know, not to focus in on horse properties so intensely. One, they don't sell as fast or they're this or it's a headache or whatever it is. And I just said, I hear you. And also, no, <laughs> that's yeah. my people. And this is my passion. And I have a big vision and I'm going to see it through. But it, it is something that, you know, I've had some clients, uh, friends and, and networking who come back to me and go, oh, well, you know, I'm only looking for, you know, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar property. And you just you have all these big ones and like they're almost not good enough to work with us. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> that is not the message. I had the same. Yeah, like, no, I will help you. And I mean, I, I don't do a ton of single family, like typical residential, but I do it really well when we do. And right now we've got, you know, a listing hitting today. That's just their standard three, two in a subdivision. We're helping them move on to a horse property, but you have to be very like careful, I think, and at least like opening the door, right? Don't close that door off. And so having conversations and making sure that you're continually like now I'm doing a lot more um, smaller property tours as well as traditional like single family and just put it all out there, like have all of these conversations, put it all out there, show people what you're doing, show people where you're at and like using the video. That's a game changer for us this year. We really have been diving into it. Our YouTube channel is ready to launch. We're doing it big. But that was I mean, we we really focused in on Facebook. That was really what kind of got brought this thing up and now it's ready to expand. And because it allows you to have those conversations where you're not boxing yourself in, you know, if you just like what I was doing on Facebook was just pounding horse property listings out there and nice ones. And they were bigger ones. And I had now that I can do more video and truly show people one, I'm a horse property person. Here's my own little barn. It's nothing crazy fancy. It's just their backyard, backyard barn, just like you. Right. And so being careful about that conversation, I think is important to have that front of mind, um, how you are portraying yourself you don't have to box yourself in um, and you shouldn't but you also absolutely go deep right go deep on what you are doing and allow those conversations to come up and just you know go deep and, and do what you love it is i love that <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that I would really like to touch on as we kind of wrap it up and, and kind of bring this full circle for people is, you know, biggest mistakes and best advice. I always like to touch on that. And I think we talked a little bit about mistakes of, you know, people honestly just doing something for the price point of it. Um, but and then on the on the winning side, I, I just love that you you know, you touched on being all in because I, I think one of the things that people fall victim to is they want to dabble in something. And when they dabble, they're like, because at the end of the day, when you have a niche, like you want to become known as the person, not like, oh, I think they do this too, but like the person. And if, if you're not all in and you're kind of one foot in, one foot out, you know, you're probably going to hurt your residential business. You're probably also not going to break into the niche business. Yeah. So it's a double loss. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like from your perspective, anything else you want to talk about related to, you know, mistakes to avoid or best practices to approach this with? Um, I should have given myself permission to do what I wanted a lot earlier in my career. hundred yeah. percent. That was I I held myself back, you know, I, I had this internal conversation that I had to prove myself in residential and have this massive business before I was good enough to go do horse properties. And that was just a me thing. And so I was the only one that held myself back. Uh, for yeah, again, five, six years, I didn't allow myself to go after what I wanted. And that was simply just, you know, a permission thing, a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people run into that, um, you know, and I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm not all completely dialed in. I have this massive vision, but sometimes it gets messy. And, and sometimes, you know, the market shifts and things happen and you just have to like, just keep going, just keep going. That is the biggest conversation, right? Is you just can't quit. And if you have, if you allow yourself to do that and give yourself permission and then just say, all right, I'm going to do this. And no matter how long it takes, I'm going to do this. You will get there. You will absolutely get there. And it'll probably happen a lot faster than you think, <laughs> typically. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I had to 
team, I was not like, I never anticipated really trying to build a real estate team. Again, that was something that happened organically. And also a big thing for me, and this is a conversation really uh, more recently in the last couple of years is know your limits too, and know your strengths. And mm -hmm. so I think I tried to do it all, right? I tried to do it all. I am wildly ADHD. I am not super detail oriented and admin like computer paperwork. It's just boring. Like I just, I want to be out there on properties. I want to be riding horses. I want to be talking to people in marketing. So I brought on a team, an admin team a lot earlier and I started building a team. And I think that's really important to know yourself and then put people in place around you when you need the help. And it may be earlier than you think just because of your certain personality or what you're doing or your lifestyle. You know, I'm a new mom, I have a two year old and we have three horses. And so I wasn't able to handle as much business as a, you know, somebody who should be starting a team. Right. And I was like, well, am I ready to start a team? But for me personally, I needed the help and I did. And, and these properties take a lot more and I was driving further for them. So I started a team earlier than I kind of, you know, some people maybe even said they should have, but it's the reality of just know yourself and know your strengths and weaknesses and, and give yourself permission. And stick with yeah, it. It's, <laughs> it's such an important conversation, like especially the the giving yourself permission and, and you know, taking other people's opinions with a grain of salt, because even for me, I was also told like you're 24 years old, you're brand new, you don't know anybody, you, you know, start with normal price points and, and average True, price points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and like, yeah, you know, luxury is not it. And uh, my fourth listing was the most expensive in my city's history at 15 million. And it's like. You know, I, I think you have to have a deeper rooted belief in yourself than anybody else, because you will get told this doesn't work. That is silly. That is stupid. You're not ready. And if you listen to that, it could derail you and deflate you very quickly versus saying, well, screw it. I, you know, I know what I'm capable of. I'm going all in. So, you know, as we start to, to kind of wrap it up, I, I, I always like to talk about the fact that, you know, we are now power partners and, you know, you've been able to come over and, and partner with us at eXp and I'd really like for you to help people understand what made that kind of spark that decision or, or made that transition. And then also what could people expect from you now getting your help to maybe explode their niche as well? So it was, um, I we were starting to grow this organic team and it was a conversation, you know, I had other brokers even telling me, you know, are you going to go out on your own and become independent? And I was thinking about it, right? I was thinking about, is that the next step? Does that make sense? My big vision is to truly have a coast to coast team here and have horse property specialists in every state so that no matter where you are, we have people we trust, we can take care of you. You have a brand standard that you can trust and rely on. This is the kind of service that we're gonna provide across the board. So that was where the conversation started. Um, and I kind of got connected with somebody in EXP. I had never given it the time of day. I think you've probably heard that before. I was like, yeah, okay, whatever, the little Sims game over there. Yeah. Um, and that was like, I'm mad at myself now at this point for not truly looking at it with like eyes wide open, right? Mm -hmm. And once I did allow myself to have those, again, allowing myself to have these conversations uh, with another, and it was another organization with EXP. And I realized that what EXP provides would allow me to get to my goals much faster. And I'm, I don't have any interest in being a managing broker in 50 <laughs> states. That is the last thing I want to do. Absolutely yeah. not. And never mind the time that that would take. Like maybe when I'm 80, I might actually get there. So I yeah. realized that EXP was obviously what made the most sense for where I wanted to go and where my goals and where I want to take this brand. And then very quickly realized that who you partner with at EXP is honestly even more important. It really is. And I started interviewing everyone. Yeah. So I probably interviewed, I don't know, eight different organizations before I actually organically funny enough, found Louie and Jeremy out here in Colorado. And it was, um, you know, I was also struggling trying to like keep all my play, you know, all the balls in the air and keep my life organized. So I found Louie's YouTube channel organically. And then it was like, wait, this is an EXP? This is an organ, this is a whole thing? Let me dive in here. And once I think actually I, I wanted to, this is totally my personality. I was like, I get it guys, you're great, but I want to talk to the top. So I actually set up a call with you and was like, let me see where this is coming from the top down and where the, you know, the mindset and the culture. And I think probably 10 minutes in, I was like, well, yeah. there's not really a conversation here. I guess that's, that's done. How do I sign up? And I, the big thing too is 
you know, being in this industry, I think you and I went through this a lot. I've been with Sotheby's, KW, with a couple other brokerages over 10 years now. And the unfortunate reality is like, it was always really big excitement to join somebody and join a brokerage and then immediate letdown. And like, that just was like the standard operating procedure. What? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And so I can say like, you guys are, this is the only organization I've truly been so impressed, so impressed from day one when I found you guys and then actually getting act, or, um, into all of the systems, tools, resources. And I continue to be impressed by the quality of the calls, the quality of the conversations and the partnership. Like everybody yeah. is so willing to jump in and help. And that's like one thing that I... I just, I live by that, right? I don't, I'm not going to charge you for conversations. I'm not going to charge you for marketing. Like, I just want to help. And so whether it's agents who, you know, a big conversation I have is these agents who are established in real estate, but they want to break into this niche. And again, they're not giving themselves for permission or they just don't have a clear path forward. So that's where I've really kind of found the, the specialty, I think, of helping people dive into that niche and plan it out. And how do you want to do this? And we have agents on my team who you know, most of them are horse property or horse people, but that's not necessarily just what they want to do. You know, like I said, I've got a guy who is big into land, one who wants to go to Florida. And so how do we sit down and really map out what you want to do with this baseline of providing a lot of value? And so that's where we're at of how do we, and I'm also building a team and a very non-traditional way. Um, I don't know why a lot of people join teams in real estate with as much as they take from you. Like that's just weird. I don't really understand it. Like there's a whole conversation in real estate about give it all away until you join a team and then it's like, give me everything. And I'm not doing that. So we're providing massive value for our agents, massive value. I don't want anything of their personal business. I just want to help you guys grow into this. And that's going to help us grow the brand. So I'm, I'm always happy to have a conversation, whether it's horse properties or a weird little niche you've got. I've helped people build um, businesses around like dog parks and, you know, just having, you know, being a dog lover. That's a big thing. Or fisheries. Like that's another mm-hmm. conversation. So whatever your passion is, you just go for it. And I'm always help. I'm always here to have a conversation for sure. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And, and you know, because I even know an agent that has their business was struggling. And when they started actually breeding dogs and then leveraging that for their business, their business blew up. And, you know, I think, again, like people are doing a disservice to themselves not to reach out to you to talk about this, because even when you look at the lineage of, you know, me, Louis, Jeremy and yourself, you know, you've got me helping you with marketing, branding, advertising and all of that. Louis systems, processes, time management, productivity, Jeremy nurturing database repeat referral and yourself on niches like it's everything anybody could need to really take their business to the next level and i think a lot of people need that over the next 12 months so again i'm going to make sure to connect all of taryn's incredible information below and you want to book a call with her because truly tapping into a niche could be the difference of exploding your business and maybe not even being in the business so taryn again thank you so much for all of this wealth of of information (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mike. Of course. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. As always, make sure to check out Terrence's incredible content that is only going to continue to get better. And we'll see you guys in the next one.